Frank, thanks very much for joining us. It would be good to get, I guess, an update from you on what you're seeing in terms of the European logistics, real estate market, more broadly in in terms of the trends and some of the areas that you're seeing. Well, I would say the best news is it's holding up. Demand is everything in all sectors. And as long as there's demand, then there uh, can be success. And Despite the more difficult economic environment in which we operate, the structural tailwinds in logistics coming long term from e-commerce, which has weakened a bit recently, but also from um, companies strengthening its supply chains is holding up. And this is why we still have healthy demand, uh, which makes us get along with the weaker numbers, which we saw last year. So you saw lower transaction volumes on the leasing side, but you also saw slower supply coming up. And as a consequence, vacancy rates increased, but only a little bit. So we are still at levels which are healthy, between 4 and 5%, depending on which European market you are in, which is far below the numbers which we know from the past, where it used to be also 7, 8, 9, or even 10%. And Frank, it would be interesting to get your take, I guess, on on what's happening, particularly if we're looking at the investment markets. As we know, 2023 had been a very particular year for for the investment market. You know, so with the investment volume decreasing by more than 50 percent, and people really not knowing which direction we would go. And this, of course, this has come into 2024. Nothing has changed fundamentally now. I think there's a broad consensus that. The interest rate levels will decrease sooner or later. Sooner can be very soon, later can be a little bit later. Generally speaking, this is a positive sign which could help the investment markets to recover. We continue with our approach. We were very active in 2023 and in 2024, we'll we'll also look for the opportunities. It is visible that some sellers have decided to sell now, so they are more willing than they used to. And this will create opportunities which we will capture whenever we have the chance. And in terms of some of the, the, the fundamentals of the market, what are you expecting to see in terms of rents and, and, and that side of the market? In terms of rent growth, we have seen phenomenal years. The last two, three years were really great. Um, we expect that this will normalize a bit. So we will still see rent growth probably above inflation in the next two, three years. On the long run, I think rent growth can be more or less along inflation is not a wrong approach. And I noticed as well that you issued a second green bond. So it'd be interesting just to pick up on that and the strategy around that, Frank. Until two years ago, the bond markets were very active. They produced enormous liquidity, not only to the real estate sector, but also to other sectors on the debt side. And exactly two years ago, this stopped. And the bond market slowed down. Either they were, they were closed for many players or they were at price levels, which made them not being attractive for other players. For us, for example, when we had issued our first bond two years, exactly two years ago, we then changed because we didn't find the bond markets attractive anymore. And then we uh, got our debt through bank loans from different sources, mostly unsecured bank loans. And we got that in the necessary volumes we needed, and also at very attractive prices, which resembled the former levels which were seen at the bond markets. And then the bond market was bad, bad, bad. And towards the end of the year and the beginning of this year, the situation on the bond market in, in improved. And we took advantage of that and now issued our first bond this year, the second in our company history with a volume of 600 million at very, very attractive terms. And uh, this is a positive sign, also a positive sign for the future. That leads then on, Frank, in a way to to company strategy. What are you looking to achieve, I guess, in, in 2024? What are the projects that you're looking at? Um, where Where is the company heading? The company is, is very stable. Yeah? So we don't change direction when the market changes immediately. We take advantage of market changes where we can do that. The bond issuance, among other pieces, is just supporting that we have access to the debt markets and, and the amounts we want to have. And uh, with our shareholder GIC, we also have access to the equity market, which means if we want to grow, we, we can grow. And that's also in our strategy for, uh, for this year and, and the future that we continue to grow, both 
through um, acquisitions, which we have done quite a bit last year, more than in the previous years, because we saw the markets being more attractive in 2023 than before, but also through developments. And development is a core part of our business. And we typically have at least 500 million euro assets under construction and, uh, and starting and completing in a year. So this may even grow a little bit. And this is the direction we go. We focus on the countries in which we're in, uh, which is uh, which are 11 countries in Europe. The newest among them is the UK, where we started last year and also will continue this year. But broadly speaking, all countries we're active in are green and we're happy to look at opportunities. Where are you seeing the positive markets or are you seeing opportunities across all of those markets where you're active? Each market looks different a little bit. And that means also slightly different approach. But most of the markets are, are very stable. And and the differences within the Eurozone, of course, are more modest than it used to be many years ago. But still, of course, it's a difference in very supply constrained markets, including um, Germany, Netherlands, France, or Southern Europe, including Spain and Italy, and, and Czech Republic, which is highly supply constrained. And then slightly more dynamic markets, including Poland, for example, which on the other side gives us lots of opportunities as well. We're increasingly seeing a bifurcation in the market in some ways between older stock and newer, more sustainable stock. Is that something that you're really having to build into your kind of strategy in terms of future acquisitions and development? Whenever we do an acquisition or when we look through our own portfolio, we ask the question, is this a sustainable building? What can we do with it to match the future requirements with respect to ESG, which is mainly E, of course, in the real estate sector? And it's a too easy answer to say only what is new is good, because if you look at also the carbon footprint, which you create by building something new, it's not always the the right solution just to say, I need a new development. So this is why we are also looking at what do we have to do to optimize our existing buildings. Generally speaking, we have the strategy that 75% of our portfolio is rated. In Brian's language, very good or better. And uh, that's also a similar way which we will continue in the future. And looking at things which we can specifically do in the assets to improve the ESG standard. Really interesting to hear what you're doing, both in terms of the market, but also that sustainability side. Thanks very much for joining us, Frank. My pleasure. Thank you very much, Richard.